I've picked up the new Lego Star Wars Advent Calendar and something you may not notice is that all of these builds every single day correlates to something special that's happened every single year for the Lego Star Wars theme. So I thought it would be a great idea to sit down and go through every single day. We will be opening the full advent calendar and tell you a little bit about the history of Lego Star Wars, specifically what each day of the advent correlates to, as this has been a Lego set 25 years in the making. So I think we can start right out with day number one and half the fun is trying to there it is, find the actual days that we will be building. I won't make you sit through me building all of these, but I have not built any of these. As you can see, they all come in plastic bags. It's a shame they're not paper bags. As I said, they've been designing this for 25 years, so I think we can let them off on this one. And let me know down in the comments how you build your advent calendars, because I always tear the door off because you've got the instructions there. It's so much easier than trying to use it when it's on. So I will be tearing the doors off of these advent calendars to build them, but definitely let me know what you do down in the comments. So day number one is this micro build of an X-Wing and this correlates to the very first year of Lego Star Wars all the way back in 1999 and is meant to represent Set 7140, simply titled X-Wing Fighter. You can definitely see some of the colors with the red tan and especially that blue stud on the back representing R2-D2. Although I'm surprised they haven't gone with white because of the original R2-D2 design. And as you can see, this Princess Leia does have a brand new Christmas torso. It's actually the same head used in the last iteration of the Hoth layer. And you can see on the front, we do have an 8080 Walker. We've also got a Rebel turret and a snow speeder. I will blow that up for you so you can get a closer look. And then on the back, we've got a Tauntaun, another snow speeder, and then the shield generator protecting the Rebels on Hoth. So it's a really cool minifigure. And this is actually a throwback to the very first layer minifigure we got all the way back in the year. 2000, which I wasn't actually alive when this minifigure come out, but this is the first layer minifigure we got from Lego from set 7190, the Millennium Falcon. And you can see Lego have definitely come a long way. Even the hair, you can tell just how far Lego have come. And I definitely prefer the new piece. And not only that, but the new minifigure has back printing. Back printing wasn't around for Star Wars when we got this layer minifigure. So it's just a plain white back and then you've got that oversized blaster which is definitely a really fun addition. In 1999 we got the Lego X-Wing and in 2001 we got a set 7146 the TIE Fighter and that is exactly what we've got here. We've got the TIE Fighter with some blue details because not many people know, I'm sure there are a handful of yous that do, when the TIE Fighters were originally made there were some blue in the design of the tires, specifically a sand blue color theme that snuck into those early Lego sets. And though the Imperial has now become known for its gray design, a lot of fans do still love the sand blue. So perhaps getting these two by twos in sand blue would have been really, really cool just to expand that Lego color palette because Sand blue is a very, very rare color to get, but nonetheless, I think having a old style TIE Fighter is gonna look really cool with that X-Wing. Not only does it look good with the X-Wing, but I feel like it doesn't scale too far away from how they would in universe. It's a bit thinner than the X-Wing and of course much taller with the wings and we are getting quite a few spare pieces we'll look at at the end because so far both the TIE and X-Wing have got a spare blue stud. Day four has already given us a second minifigure, or if you even can call it a minifigure, because this day links all the way back to 2002, where we got the first Super Battle Droid figure in 7163, the Republic gunship, which you might know the number of, because it's also the set that came with that Jedi Bob, which we've recently seen resurface for Jedi Bob Starfighter and the new Lego Star Wars show. And though a lot of people were hoping that Lego would bring back the classic design of B2 battle droids, I do have one of the ones from the new battle pack and they are 
identical to those B2. So it would have been nice if they brought back the classic mold for it. A lot of money and honestly not worth it in my opinion because they're going to look a lot better in your droid armies with the new Lego Star Wars Battle Pack. And we'll place the B2 next to the TIE Fighter and move on to day number five. For day five, we have an 8080 mini build, which does look really cool and something that we saw, I think, last year. This is relating to sets 4483, the 8080 we saw in 2003. And it definitely holds up to an 8080 micro build with C in a recent advent calendar. So let's move swiftly on to the next state, which actually relates to an early UCS model we saw from Lego. I do have to say after building this Y-Wing, which if you were interested, dates back to 2004, set 10134, the UCS Y-Wing Attack Starfighter, which is actually a pretty good UCS set for how long ago it came out. That's 20 years ago. And I don't think it's too far off what we get to date, but the engines of this micro build for the Y-Wing definitely make my Rex Mock look Good. And if you weren't aware, I built a Rebel Y-Wing to a 145 minifigure scale using just five of them Captain Rex sets, which if you do want to collect a few Rex minifigures or mock some other captains for your 501st armies, I definitely recommend checking out the full video. Now, day number seven is right on the bottom corner. So perhaps putting these builds right to the back of the advent isn't the best idea I've had all video, but also isn't the worst. But I definitely think you're going to recognize this one. I've recently added one of these to my Lego City. And of course, we have the mini kit, which for those of you growing up in the 2000s will, of course, know the Lego Star Wars video game came out in 2005. And that was the one based around the prequel trilogy. So if you would like to see where I've hid my mini kit in the city, check out my recent Lego City video. With day eight, we are already a third through this advent calendar and that means we're a third through the history of Lego Star Wars, but this is something we do want to be seeing again in Lego very, very soon. Again, no spoilers, you'll have to wait until I've built it. And if you couldn't already tell, this is the long-awaited Jabba's Salvage of 2024. Now this specifically isn't that long awaited. And this is a callback to 2006 210 Java's Salvage. But loads of people are waiting for the announcement of a UCS Java's Salvage. And the slopes of this are actually quite hard to straighten out. But the worst thing about this model, and honestly, it's just nitpicking now, are the two angled slopes on top. I really would have liked Lego to have include one of each side just for mock building down the line if this does get parted out. But this is the best Microfighter Falcon I think I have ever seen from the team at LEGO Star Wars. So again, shout out to the designer or designers of this set. It's not something that LEGO actually advertised on the box and would be nice to get a name under there, but I can completely understand why they choose not to. This Millennium Falcon dates back to, of course, the first Ultimate Collector's Millennium Falcon. We have seen a second one since. Back in 2007, saw the release of set 10179. And I don't think they knew at the time how long a UCS Falcon would be on shelves for. The one that's come out most recently is almost a decade old. After getting Sabine recently in the UK LEGO Star Wars magazine, it's nice to be getting an Ahsoka minifigure, so I don't have to spend the 65 or even 50 pound on sale to get the T6 because I'm not too fussed about Hyang and Marok and will likely pick them up at a later date. But the reason we're getting Ahsoka's minifigure in day 10 is because all the way back in 2008, we got the first Ahsoka minifigure ever in set 7675, the ATTE Walker. And I think she also come in 7680, the Twilight as well which was released, if not the same day, very close behind. And whilst I don't actually own that minifigure, how many of you actually thought that I was about to pull her out? Because those old Clone Wars minifigures are quite pricey. I do have this custom here, which is so much better, and I'll be showcasing her alongside a few other custom minifigures I've picked up recently for a future mock. 
Ahsoka has been one of the best minifigures that LEGO has released recently. She actually just got voted on LEGO Ideas to be the cover of the character Encyclopedia. I also predicted the next one as well because for day number 11, all the way back in 2009, we got a set 8039. And it's possibly even the reason that I am sat here making this video today because when the world went into lockdown, I decided to go on Bricklink, make my very first order and part out a Lego set. And it was said set 8039. And if you've watched the channel recently or seen some of my videos where I talk about getting back into Lego, which I haven't touched on too heavily, you'll know this is the Veneta class Republic attack cruiser, more simply known as the Republic Veneta, which is a really, really cool Lego set that I think still does hold up somewhat to today's set. So this Veneta is really, really nice. Of course, I'm not gonna say it's better than my own. It's definitely bigger than what I expected Lego to release. As you can see, a few of the models are smaller. So that's what gives them the extra pieces for this Veneta. Now I have to say, that for the bridges, they have the jumper toll on top pointing straight. I want to argue the fact it looks better on the side, but I actually think it does look better leading straight. Perhaps a grill piece would have worked a little better, although really they just need to invent a piece that would work really cool there. So I'm happy with the jumper and I think this is a really cool model and I might have to keep some of these on display. This ship is meant to represent Palpatine's shuttle that he flies in episode three and the set it relates to was released in 2010, 8096 Emperor Palpatine's shuttle. So I was holding out hope for a row class shuttle. Like I say, there is still time for Lego to release one for Bad Batch season three and perhaps even include Palpatine. This ship is from the Clone Wars, not to be confused with the one in Ahsoka show, it is a T6. Jedi shuttle. It's the same model, but the one in Ahsoka has light and dark bluish gray parts where the white has been worn down and even the red is a bit darker. So the white and red color scheme makes this a perfect Clone Wars Jedi shuttle, which relates all the way back to set 7931 from 2011, the T6 Jedi shuttle. And this goes great with the next set, and this build originally confused the LEGO Star Wars community a bit. Everyone thought this was going to be a Fang Fighter, myself included, and many people didn't actually know what this ship was meant to represent. There is also another one which should be on one of the last days of the advent, which we'll get into when we get there. But this is a Comric class Mandalorian fighter, not a Fang Fighter, because this is based on 2012 now and specifically built to represent set 9525 Previzla's Mandalorian Comric Fighter, which does go re really well with the T6 Jedi shuttles. Anyone that's been around LEGO Star Wars in the last five years will know what a 501st LEGO Trooper looks like. Back in 2020, that was one of the greatest sets that the LEGO Star Wars community has had and had the love for in probably the whole time of myself collecting Lego. And this is actually celebrating the very first 501st minifigure, which I am lucky enough to have right here. This is the 501st Clone Trooper minifigure that came in set 75002, the second set after that 75 set designation came into existence. I think it was the Z95 Headhunter around the time as well. And it would be nice to get another one of them ships in Lego soon. But it's really great to see just how far the 501st minifigure has come because although the one on the left alone doesn't look too bad and actually looks like a few of the Stormtroopers we were getting a few years ago, the big thing here for me at least is that tote printing and I definitely prefer the white hips. With the new 501st side by side, you can see the Lego team have really smashed it out of the park with this. I'm a big fan of the helmet holes as well because it allows you to customize your mini figures a lot more than any figures that don't have helmet holes, but it's great to see the two 501st troopers in the same image. I hope you're keeping up with all the different ships I've said and all the different sets that these figures have come in and I hope the images on screen 
are helping. But if not, don't worry, we are nearing the end. We only have like nine more doors left. So let's get cracking with door number 16. And you'll almost definitely recognize day 16's build. It is the Ghost, which the first set of the Ghost come out in 2014. And it doesn't sound that long ago, but that was around the time that Rebels come out. And that is over 10 years ago. Set 75053, just titled the Ghost. It didn't come with the Phantom or the Phantom 2 like the new one did. I'm very happy they included it in the same set as the Ghost because it didn't feel like you were buying as much. And I really like what they've done with the jumper tiles on top to get the different colors on the ghost and also get a slight angle to what otherwise would just be some flat slopes. The minifigure we have is a Christmas Luke Skywalker, which is really nice that we've got a Christmas Luke and Leia. After all, they are twins. But whereas Leia's torso had a Hoth design, Luke's actually has a Tatooine design. And you can see on the back, we've got a moisture evaporator as well as the sand crawler. And on the front, we have the Lars Homestead with the Binary Suns, which is a really nice design. And again, we'll be taking a look at all of these Christmas jumpers alongside the other ones in my collection in a few days time. So stick around if you would like to see all of the other ones from the previous years. I think there's only two or three that I'm missing out on. But this Luke minifigure is here to represent the minifigure we got in 2015 when they updated the Luke Skywalker final door minifigure in 75093 Death Star final door. And it is technically a UCS minifigure. It's the same minifigure we saw in the second UCS Death Star. It's also the same minifigure we saw in the late iteration of the final door a handful of years ago. And the only big difference since then is actually the hairpiece which Luke does come with in this set so it's really nice to be seeing that hair piece i believe even the face print is the same as this original minifigure so it was a big step for a luke skywalker minifigure and what you can do is take the hair from this minifigure apply it to that minifigure from all the way back in 2015 or whenever you picked it up and now it looks just as good as the brand new one that comes in that diorama i have a few of these hair pieces that I've added to various Lukes around my collection. I'm going to say it again, this is the best advent calendar I have ever built from any of the themes. I've only built a Guardians of the Galaxy one outside of Star Wars, but this tops every other year with the detail and just the build quality. I am so surprised they managed to sum up this build onto this card, but it was so easy to follow and None of these have been too difficult to build. On the box, it says it's a six plus, and I think that will hold up. Six-year-olds can definitely put this together just based on the two, three-step images. And if you didn't know, this is meant to be a U-wing. It was featured in Rogue One. We haven't really seen it anywhere else, but this is based off the set that came out in 2016, 75155, the Rebel U-wing fighter. I'm holding out hope for a UCS version of this. There are two UCS sets I would like to see, the U-Wing and the Ghost. And who knows, maybe one day we can take a look back at this advent and we'll have UCS versions of them all. Yoda's shuttle. We got one in the magazine. We've got a few sets of it now and we don't really seem to be able to get far enough away from Yoda's Starfighter, but at least this one, unlike the one in the magazine, if you have seen that, that is... This one looks like what it's meant to represent. We've got a blue stud for R2-D2 on top again, which is the third time a blue stud has appeared. The second time a blue stud has appeared representing R2-D2. And it goes well with the year 2017 when we got set 75168. And if you do own this one, there's not too many new pieces in the new one. So you can modify it to make it if you have the pieces at your disposal. And the minifigure is technically a Mandoverse minifigure. It's the new Praetorian guards that we've got in the Moff Gideon versus Paz Vizsla duel. But we only get two in that set, and this is the third one you need to complete the scene. So I'm sure many people will be picking up the advent for this minifigure alone. But this minifigure does relate to a Last Jedi minifigure that came out in 2018. 
Inset 75216 Snoke's Throne Room, which is not the minifigure I have here. That minifigure did have a red dress piece, but was also released in a battle pack, which was a more affordable way to get those characters. And I'm pretty confident in saying Snoke himself was in that year's advent calendar. Day 21 pairs up to 2019, and we are running out of days for how many years we have left. But this is based on set 75251, Darth Vader's Castle, which was an Amazon exclusive, at least here in the UK, which meant there wasn't really a chance to pick it up on sale. But I really liked some of the minifigures, such as the Imperial Transport Pilot, which was almost a 501st Stormtrooper. In 2020, we got the Mandalorian's Razor Crest 75292. This was before it blew up on screen and actually before we got the UCS version. So that's another ship we've got a UCS variety of in this advent. We got so close, but of course they're going to include a Luke's Landspeeder in the advent calendar. It's actually a really nice model and again, different to everything we've seen in the past. And the final micro build or miniature build or just day of the advent calendar is the Firehawk that jumps ahead to 2024. The Young Jedi Adventure set that we got this year, 4 plus set, and there are a few big pieces in this. So it almost feels like the 4 plus equivalent of one of these advent builds. It's really nice to see the history of Star Wars next to some of the newer minifigures, especially that 501st Clone Trooper, seeing how far they have come is really, really nice. And I can't wait to see what LEGO do with the next 25 years of LEGO Star Wars. But before I wrap up this video, there is one last point I would like to make, and I do need to clear all the minifigures here, because not only do we end up with a load of these spare pieces, which definitely could have been cut back a little bit. I'm not one to complain about getting LEGO in LEGO sets, but we do have a load of these blue studs. There are a few one by ones as well. We've got duplicates of, but there's also a lot of plastic waste and bits of these little bags that really shouldn't be in Lego sets. They have gone out of their way to keep these cardboard trays, which do work as sorting trays as well. I did used to use these as sorting trays before I picked up some of the food trays but they really need to be paper bags. I know LEGO have pledged for 2030, 2035, whenever it is. So hopefully this time next year, I can sit here and celebrate the fact that LEGO have put paper bags in their advents. But until then, that is gonna be my biggest critique with the set. The instructions are really, really nice. And especially if you aren't a fan of keeping the actual box for the advent calendar, you can tear off all the doors and reduce greatly the amount of space needed to store it. But that is all for this review. Again, stick around to see what mock I build using all the pieces from this set and to check out all my other Christmas minifigures. Check out all the videos on screen now and may the bricks be with you always.